I am Marie Curie. I am Marie Curie from Ordinary People Change the World by Brad Meltzer, illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. I am Marie Curie. When I was four years old in Poland, this was one of my favorite treasures, my dad's glass cabinet filled with scientific instruments. I used to stare at it, wondering about each item. This is a physics apparatus. Physics apparatus. I didn't know what the words meant, but I'd never forget them. As a science teacher, my father needed these tools, but the Russian government soon shut down laboratory classes in our schools. They didn't want Polish kids to learn about science. They thought education would be dangerous, that it would make us powerful. They were right. I really liked learning. One day, when my older sister was struggling to read, I picked up her book and read the first sentence easily. From the looks on everyone's faces, I thought I'd made a mistake. How do you do that? You're only four years old. I don't know. Did I do something wrong? No, it was amazing! Back then, men didn't think girls could be good students, and they certainly didn't think we could be scientists. So boys were always trying to challenge me. Okay, I'm going to read the, you this poem. If you're so smart, you should be able to write the whole thing from memory. You ready? I guess so. Think she'll be able to do it? Not a chance. How's this? I don't believe it. She didn't miss a word. From the very start, there was one person who always believed in me. My dad. When my mom got sick, he took care of us kids. Since he was a teacher, even if we were just taking a walk, he'd give us a new scientific lesson. See that sunset, Manya? It looks like the sun's moving, but really the earth that's spinning. Manya was my nickname. Back then, we didn't have phones, TVs, or computers, so our Saturday nights were spent with Dad sharing one of the most powerful things of all, books. He'd read us classics like David Copperfield and one of my favorites, A Tale of Two Cities. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. Growing up, life was hard. My mom and one of my sisters passed away. My father wasn't allowed to teach the subject he loved. We didn't have much money. To escape the hard times, I would read. Books were a place where I could enter another world. Draw. And dance. One night I danced so long I completely wore out my shoes. At 15, I graduated from high school, early. I won the gold medal for being the first in my class. By 16, I knew I wanted to make an impact on this world. I knew how. I want to be a scientist! There was only one problem. Where I lived, the university didn't accept women. I'm sorry, no girls allowed. That's not fair. They wouldn't let me in, but I had my own ideas. Lucky for me, someone started a secret college where they taught women subjects that no one else would teach us. It was called the Flying University. That's the coolest name, right? The college didn't really fly, but with more than 1,000 women enrolled, it was magical and powerful. This is called the periodic table. It lists every element we know, like hydrogen, oxygen. Eventually, my sister Bronya and I made a plan. We would save enough money to go to the Sobron, 
in France, one of the most famous universities in the world. But we didn't have enough money for both of us. You go first, then I'll follow. You sure you'll be okay? Don't worry, I'll never stop learning. Every day, I was so determined to become a scientist. I'd wake up at 6 a.m. and read books in three different languages on physics and anatomy. Then I'd do the math problems my dad would send me to solve. Dad, please send more math problems. By the time I was 18, I was doing my own experiments and drawing my own conclusions. I also learned one of the most valuable lessons of all. You should never accept everything as it is. Life like science, can always be made better. I do chemistry and physics experiments here. Watch this. Poof. Poof. This is the one. Poof. This is the first laboratory I ever had access to. It was run by my cousin. Watch this one. Poof. Poof. Ta-da! I had lots of accidents and failures. Making change is never easy. It takes hard work. Finally, when I was 23, my dream came true. I became a student at the Sorbonne. I would dedicate my life to science. You sure you know what you're getting into? Absolutely. I felt like a new person with new power. When I got there, I even signed the registration book differently. Call me by my new name, Marie. Like I said, making change isn't easy. I had to climb six flights of stairs to get to my room. I had a tiny stove, and there wasn't much to eat. In the winter, it was so cold that water would freeze in the basin. I'd have to sleep under all my clothes. I know it sounds hard, but it was worth it to be able to study what I wanted. These were some of the best years of my life. The Sorbonne School of Science had 2,000 students. Only 23 were women. And only two of us were studying science. I was so nervous during my first exam I could barely read it. But when the professor announced our scores, Marie Curie is first in her class. In, 19, in 1893, I got my degree in physics. A year later, I got a second degree in mathematics. Soon after, I got married to a scientist, of course. This is my husband, Pierre. When we had a daughter, people thought I would spend less time in the lab. But Pierre worked hard to make sure we were equal partners. My dad helped, too, by babysitting. Back then... People thought that men were supposed to get jobs and women were supposed to stay home. Again, I had my own ideas. The only thing you're supposed to do is chase what you love. This was my next lab, a crowded, damp storeroom. I started studying a chemical element called uranium. According to my instruments, it's giving off certain rays. These rays are filled with energy that we can study and use. I made up a new term for it, radioactivity. My husband found my research so exciting, he put aside his own work to join me. Together, we discovered two brand new elements, polonium and radium. Who is that woman? What does she know about science? She knows a lot. Scientists believe that atoms behaved in certain ways. But guess what I had? Other ideas? You better believe it. Those ideas, based on my research, changed the way the world looked at atoms and radioactivity. In 1903, I was nominated, along with my husband and another scientist named Henry Bequel, for the Nobel Prize in Physics, one of the most prestigious awards in science. I was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize. At first, they incorrectly said it was just the two men who did all the work, but Pierre wouldn't accept the prize until they told the truth and gave me credit. Because I was a woman, though, they wouldn't let me address the audience. Eventually, 
I became the first woman professor at the Sorbonne. When my lab became the top place in the world for studying radium and measuring radioactivity. We had a staff of 22 plus 20 additional women scientists as volunteers. From there, I won a second Nobel Prize, by myself, this time in chemistry. I was the first person ever to receive Nobel Prizes in two fields. She's an inspiration. Then, I invented mobile x-ray units to help treat soldiers during World War I. This is my daughter, Irene, who also wanted to be a scientist. She used to come with me. She's an inspiration. In the United States, I even got invited to the White House, where President Harding presented me with one gram of radium in a locked box. It was worth more than $100,000, a gift from the women in America who'd collected money so I could continue my groundbreaking work. She's such an inspiration. In my life, I was told that only boys could be educated. Only boys should study science, and only boys would win awards. I had other ideas. Don't let anyone limit what you can achieve. It's easy to follow the crowd and do what's been done before, but don't f but forge your own path. You have to be daring. You have to risk failure. That's how you learn. Education is like a magic key. It unlocks knowledge. And with that knowledge, you have power. Today, Marie Curie's findings on radiation are an important part of how doctors treat people with cancer. After she won her second Nobel Prize, no other woman won again for 24 years until her daughter Irene won it. In 1995, they moved her remains to the French Pantheon, the first woman recognized there for her accomplishments. But here's the sign that's still there. To the great men from a grateful country. Did you know her face is on French money? The 500 franc note. Today, there are many amazing women scientists, and there can be even more. Join us. Your experiments and ideas can help change the world. Science taught me to ask questions, experiment, fail, try again, and then try some more. You don't always find the answers you expect, and that's okay. You will find new information, new questions, new possibilities. I am Marie Curie. I know the power of discovery. So we have Elizabeth Blackburn, the biologist, Sally Ride, astronaut. May Jemison, astronaut, Grace Hopper, computer scientist, Dorothy Hodgkin, chemist, Katherine Johnson, mathematician, Lise Meitner, physicist. Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Marie Curie. Timeline. November 7th, 1867, born in Warsaw, Poland as Maria Slokodowska. 1891, registers at the Sorbonne under the name Marie. July 26th, 1895, marries Pierre Curie. July 18th, 1898, invents the term radioactivity and announces discovery of polonium. July 26, 1898, announces discovery of radium. December 1903, wins Nobel Prize in Physics. November 5, 1906, becomes first woman professor at the Sorbonne. 1911, wins Nobel Prize in Chemistry. July 4, 1934, dies in France from long-time exposure to radiation. 1995, reburied in the French Pantheon. In the top left, we have Marie with Pierre. In the top right, we have Marie as a child in the middle, with siblings left to right, Zosia, 
Hela, Josef, and Branya. At the bottom left, we have Mary teaching at the Sorbonne. And at the bottom right, we have Mary in her laboratory.